Life of Pi, Summary of Part 3, Chapter 95. Pi is at the Benito Juarez Infirmary, a place to sit, treat sick people in Tomatlan, Mexico. Two officials from the Japanese Maritime Department were in Long Beach, California, and they drive to visit Pi to learn what caused the Tsimsum to sink. The officials record their interview with Pi, and they provide a transcript to the author of Life of Pi. Mr. Tomohiro Akamoto and Mr. Atsuro Chiba are the two Japanese officials. Their trip to visit Pi takes them 41 hours, and one mechanic cannibalized their car, taking good parts and replacing them with used ones. Note, their journey was difficult, involved more than one mode of transportation, and involved a type of cannibalism, so their journey has some similarity to Pi's. Chapter 96 Mr. Akamoto introduces himself and his assistant to Pai and asks Pai if they can interview him about the sinking of the Tsimsum. When Pai agrees, Mr. Chiba turns on a tape recorder. Mr. Akamoto states the date, February 19, 1978. Pai and Mr. Akamoto discuss their trips. Mr. Akamoto says his drive to the infirmary was beautiful. Pai says his journey after the ship sank was horrible. Mr. Akamoto reveals that he had spoken to the police and had seen the lifeboat. Chapter 97. This chapter has two words. The story. Chapter 98. Both officials react politely to Pai's story and say it was interesting. In Japanese to each other, they reveal their disbelief in the story and their belief that Pai is treating them like fools. Pai seems only interested in getting cookies from them, even though he has many cookies in his bed. Chapter 99. Mr. Akimoto tells Pai that they do not believe his story. Mr. Akimoto gives one reason why. Bananas don't float, so the orangutan could not have reached the lifeboat in the way Pai had described. Pai produces two bananas and has Mr. Akimoto put them in a sink of water to prove that they do float. Next, Pai and Akimoto argue about the possibility of a floating algae island, and Pai brings up the names of scientists whose ideas had at first been dismissed, but had later been accepted. Since they are talking about plant organisms, Mr. Chiba talks about his uncle's bonsai trees, and Pai points out that people could disbelieve in hundred-year-old trees, two feet tall, that can be carried around. Impatiently, Akimoto ends the discussion when Pai begins again to talk about the full-grown trees of the algae island. Akimoto says to put them aside. Pai jokes, saying it would be hard to pull trees out and carry them. Akimoto laughs and, in Japanese, tells Chiba to laugh, too. Akimoto tells Pai they also have trouble believing that Pai could have survived for months with a dangerous tiger in a lifeboat. The police have been unable to find Richard Parker. Pai says he could tell them about a panther that could not be found after escaping the Zurich Zoo, and he explains that wild animals are afraid of people. Note, by now you may be angry about Akimoto's disbelief and want him to believe Pai. Or you may be remembering Chapter 11, where Pai first talked about the Zurich panther and at the end of the chapter said, and they expected to find ha in the middle of a tropical Mexican jungle? Imagine, what were they thinking? Akimoto insists Pai's story is hard to believe. Pai gives examples of other amazing animal stories, but Akimoto still does not believe in Pai's story. Angrily, Pai responds, Life is hard to believe. Ask any scientist. God is hard to believe. Ask any believer. Note, remember Mr. Kumar the atheist scientist and Mr. Kumar the Muslim from Chapter 20. One was a scientist and one was a believer. Okamoto says he is just trying to be reasonable. Pai says that he applied reason at every moment. Pai adds, though, that if you are excessively reasonable, you risk throwing out the universe with the bathwater. Note, in Chapter 1, Pai said he could admire atheists and religious people. Atheists study science to understand the universe. Believers study religion. Both make leaps of faith. Pi does not admire agnostics who are full of questions and facts. Also, consider if Pi used reason to survive or to create a believable story about how he survived in the lifeboat, or both. Chiba calms Pi down by giving him a chocolate bar. Then Okamoto assures Pi that they only want to know what caused the Tsimsum to sink. They know that Pi has no responsibility for the tragedy. Pai sticks to his story, and Akimoto says it is unlikely that Pai could have encountered another blind man at sea. Akimoto points out that Pai had said he talked about food with the Frenchman, and that the cook on the Tsimsum was a Frenchman. Akimoto says maybe the Frenchman Pai met was the cook. Pai says he doesn't know because the tiger ate the Frenchman's face. 
Pai says the small bones left in the lifeboat should prove the island story about the meerkats, but Okamoto says the bones could have come from the ship. Pai insists that the bones can prove his story, but Okamoto disagrees. They argue some more, and Okamoto says again that he just wants to know what caused the Tsim Tsum to sink. Pai says he understands, and reminds Okamoto that Pai lost his whole family because the ship sank. They pause, eat cookies, discuss the weather in Mexico, and then Pai asks, So you didn't like my story? The men assure him that they had liked the story. Okamoto says he wants no invention, just what really happened. Pai says that life is a story, an invention that each person experiences differently. Pai says that what Okamoto wants is a story that will confirm what he already knows, dry, yeastless factuality. Note, dry, yeastless factuality was discussed previously in Chapter 22, where the author writes that a dying atheist might see white light and see that make the deathbed leap of faith. The agnostic would see the light, accept the dry, useless factuality of not enough oxygen in the brain, and miss the better story. Akamoto says, We want a story without animals that will explain the sinking of the Simsum. Pai says, Here's another story. Pai says that when the ship sank, he swam for the lifeboat. The cook who was in the lifeboat with others threw him a life buoy. Four had survived. The cook... Pai, Pai's mother, and a Chinese sailor. Pai's mother had a few bananas. The lifeboat had emergency rations and solar stills, but the cook panicked before a whole day ended and started eating flies. Pai described the cook as a brute. The cook also killed a rat, dried pieces in the sun, and ate them. Pai tried a piece without letting his mother know. The Chinese sailor had broken his leg when he had jumped off the Simsum. Pai said the sailor was beautiful, like a Chinese emperor. The young sailor was in terrible pain because his bone was sticking out of his thigh. He spoke not a word of English, but Pai and his mother tried to comfort him. After some days, the sailor's foot turned black, and the cook said that the only way to save him was to cut off his leg. Pai and his mother surprised the sailor, grabbing him and holding him down. The cook cut off the leg. There was no anesthesia. There was screaming and blood. Pai and his mom wrapped the stump and tied a rope above it to stop the bleeding, but Pai expected the sailor to die that night. In the morning, the sailor was still alive. Pai sees the amputated leg. He grabs a life jacket to use to pick it up and throw it overboard, but the cook stops him. The cook says the whole point of cutting off the leg was to get bait for fishing. Pai's mother overhears the cook's words and becomes very angry. She says they have plenty of food for now and holds up the container of biscuits. She is surprised by the lightness of the container and sees that only crumbs are left. Pai's mother yells at the cook for being selfish, and the cook tells her that Pai ate many of them too. Pai confesses, and his mother silently goes back to nursing the sailor. Pai goes to his mother and tells her he is sorry. She has tears in her eyes and says, "'We're all alone.' Pai reveals that it has now been two weeks since the ship sank. There is little hope that his father and Ravi have survived. The sailor dies, and the cook butchers him. Pai's mother wants the victim's face covered, but the cook goes over, scalps him, and pulls off his face. Pai and his mother vomit. The cook hangs up pieces of flesh everywhere so they can dry. Pai's mother is outraged and slaps the cook hard. Pai thinks her action is very heroic, but he is afraid. The cook looks away. As time passes, the cook fishes, catches nothing, and eats strips of the sailor's flesh. Pai and his mother eat none. Pai says the cook was smart. He made a raft to help with fishing, and it was due to the cook that they survived. The cook catches dorados and sea turtles. Pai and his mother learn how to eat them raw, but Pai's mother always felt revulsion. There were happy times when there was enough to eat. There were horrible starving times, too. One day, Pai is weak and cannot hold on to a turtle. The cook hits him. Pai's mother hits the cook. She tells Pai to go to the raft, and Pai thinks she is following. Pai reaches the raft. He sees his mother fighting the cook. Pai says, I did nothing but watch. Pai sees the cook lift his knife and bring it down again and again. Then the cook throws something to Pai, who catches it. It is his mother's head. Pai drops his mother's head into the sea. He sees the cook throw his mother's body overboard. Pai stays on the raft that day and night. In the morning, Pai boards the lifeboat, and the cook gives him the best parts of a turtle and its blood. Pai and the cook know the knife is on the middle seat. 
Pi grabs it and stabs the cook in the stomach. Pi says the cook let himself be killed. He never said he was sorry. He just lifted his head so Pi could stab him in the neck. The cook died without speaking, and Pi continued to stab him. Pi soothed his chapped hands with the cook's blood. He ate the man's heart and liver. He cut off great pieces of flesh. Pi says he was such an evil man. Worse still, he met evil in me. Selfishness, anger, ruthlessness. I must live with that. Pi says solitude began. I turned to God. I survived. There is silence. Pi asks if the officials want him to change any parts of his story to make it more believable. Mr. Okamoto realizes that Pi's stories match. The zebra and the Chinese sailor each had a broken leg. The hyena tore off the zebra's leg, and the cook cut off the sailor's. The blind Frenchman admitted to killing a man and a woman, and the cook had killed the sailor and Pai's mother. Mr. Chiba sees then that the orangutan is Pai's mother and the tiger is Pai, because Pai killed the cook, and in his original story, the tiger had killed the hyena and the blind Frenchman. Mr. Akimoto agrees. The officials cannot figure out the purpose of the island section of Pai's first story. Mr. Okamoto decides to ask Pai if the cook had had any information about why the Simsum sank or why there had been no distress call. Pai says the cook had no information and Pai doesn't know why no distress call had been sent. Pai says he does not believe that anyone cared about the Simsum sinking. Okamoto says Pai was too far out for air rescue, but ships had been told to look for the Simsum or survivors. Note, Yan Martel said he put in the sections about the floating island and the blind Frenchman to push readers into making a leap of faith. Readers would either be like Mr. Kumar the scientist and reject Pai's story, or be like Mr. Kumar the believer and continue believing no matter what. Pai tells the officials that the Simsum and its crew were third rate. Pai says the crew got drunk and let animals out of their cages. They spoke no English and were no help. Mr. Okamoto asks about the officers. Pai says they made Pai and his family feel unwelcome. They spoke Japanese and did not include the Indian family. Pai says he and his family began to eat on their own in his mother and father's cabin. Pai says he does not know if the officers were competent. Pai says the back of the ship, the stern, sank first. Pai says the ship did not hit another ship, an object, or the ground. He was unaware of any mechanical problems after leaving Manila. Pai does not know if the ship was properly loaded. He cannot explain why the ship sank, just that he heard an explosion before it did sink. The ship sank in about 20 minutes, and the waves were moderate, about 25 feet high. Mr. Okamoto ends his questioning of Pai, accepting that no one will ever know what caused the Simsum to sink. He thanks Pai for answering his questions. Pai has a question for Okamoto. Pai wants to know that since both stories account for his 227 days at sea, and it makes no difference as to which is true, which story do the officials think is the better story? Mr. Chiba answers at once, the story with the animals. Mr. Okamoto finds the question interesting and says in Japanese, yes. Then he tells Pai, the story with the animals is the better story. Pai replies, thank you, and so it goes with God. Note, Yan Martel, author of Life of Pi, says that his book can be summarized in three lines. Life is a story. You can choose your story. A story with God is the better story. The officials don't understand. There is silence, and then Pi begins to cry. Okamoto tells Pi that when they drive away, they will be careful to not run into Richard Parker. Pi replies, don't worry, you won't. He's hiding somewhere you will never find him. Mr. Okamoto thanks Pai and calls Pai Mr. Patel. Okamoto says he is very sorry about what happened to Pai. Okamoto asks Pai about his future plans. Pai says there are only sad memories left for him in India. He will go to Canada. Okamoto says Pai will receive insurance money. They all say their goodbyes and Pai gives them some cookies for their trip. Chapter 100 the author says that Mr. Okamoto's letter to him described the interrogation of Pi as being difficult and memorable, and Pi as being very thin, very tough, very bright. Mr. Okamoto's official report claimed no known cause for the tragedy. 
The explosion suggested a major engine or boiler problem, but nothing could be confirmed. Okamoto recommended closing the case. Life of Pi ends with the end of Mr. Okamoto's report. As an aside, story of sole survivor Mr. Pasin Molitor Patel, Indian citizen, is an astounding story of courage and endurance in the face of extraordinarily difficult and tragic circumstances. In the experience of this investigator, his story is unparalleled in the history of shipwrecks. Very few castaways can claim to have survived so long at sea as Mr. Patel, and none in the company of an adult Bengal tiger. Note. The report compliments Pi, does not accuse him of cannibalism, and the words none in the company of a tiger can suggest Pi was with a tiger or was not. As in both of Pi's stories, there is truth in Mr. Okamoto's report. Also note that Richard Parker was at Pi's zoo in India and on his journey. In Canada, an orange cat is part of the family. To read about the cannibalism of an actual Richard Parker, please go to the link provided for the New York Times.